Leafs talk, JD Bunkus, Justin Bourne, Sam McKee, the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, get more than three goals for the first time, I believe, in nine playoff games. More than two. Austin Matthews gets his first <laughs> goal in six playoff games, and the Toronto Maple Leafs hold on uh, get, and get a lead against the Boston Bruins for the first time this season. Lovely, lovely stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit a thumbs up for the boys. Uh, also, drop us a comment anytime. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at JD Bunkus, at JT Bourne, at Sammy McKee. And if you're listening on podcast, leave five stars. Uh, gentlemen, uh, where to begin with this one? Sammy, let's start with you. How how big was tonight in terms of changing your perception of this series? Uh, it was a great game, and I think it changes my perception a little bit. But I think we just all have to be thankful for singular moments in playoff hockey games. And Austin Matthews mm. catching the go route dropping it at his feet and putting Allmark on an absolute poster to give them the lead mm. in the eventual win is one of the sweeter ones of the past few years. Like that's right up there. That's as good as it gets. Silences TD garden. That was electric. And that one got a little bit of a, you know, 16 year old Sammy reaction, a little bit of a car flag, Sammy, a little bit of Joe in a Sammy reaction. And uh, the Leafs get a big win in, in Boston. But yeah, this was just, one of my favorite moments of the last few years. Just look at that move, backhand, forehand, how you doing? See you later in the big Sally. Gotta love it, boys. Yeah, it's crazy the difference uh, 48 hours make because you sit here heading back to Toronto. You get your split in Boston. On mass for two games, you feel like they were the better team. I do anyway, like, you know, maybe incrementally, but I feel like they're the better team over two full games. Samsonov comes around and makes you feel better about them. Matthews gets off the schneid goal to assist is a real leader in tonight's game bunch of hits bunch of one face-offs it's unbelievable to sit here after a 60 minute game like that and be like huh okay this feels totally different now well especially since the game started right where it's like it's a it's a dumb penalty yeah. by McCabe that puts the leaf shorthanded and all of a sudden you're sitting there and the Leafs are trailing one nothing after what I thought was actually a good start like I thought that the Leafs came out with jump tonight you well. know, I texted you guys right away that Tavares was throwing hits around, Matthews looked engaged, and within a heartbeat, they're just down and you're staring at that one nothing. And I don't know about you guys, but the Toronto Maple Leafs down one nothing to the Boston Bruins feels like it's three nothing against anybody else. <laughs> Daunting. Like it is. It's a daunting lead. <laughs> it is as ugly of a one nothing as there is in sports. Like I, I guess maybe like. You play the Italian national team in soccer <laughs> <laughs> in circa like 2004 to 2008. Yeah. That one maybe, but this is just horrific. And just immediately after for me, it was, this was a good game where the Leafs just kept fighting back and coming back. And it starts with the first Domi goal, right? Where they just respond immediately and they get one. And so that that's the story for me tonight of Toronto is that they came out with energy they came out and played what I thought was a harder, more purposeful game, and they never really abandoned that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, th I think, you know, something that we've talked about with this team when they can't score goals, sometimes they get ahead of the play and they get frustrated and they start to cheat, and all of a sudden it's 2 nothing the other way on an odd man rush. I thought they stayed patient throughout the game, got some really good shifts from their depth lines. Like the fourth line was in the offensive zone. It felt like every time they were on the ice – and, you know, J.D., you know, we were having our group chat there at intermission looking at some of the stats, and the Leafs hadn't got many odd man rushes for maybe two of them. And you mm -hmm. said about Boston, they're just patient and wait for you to make your mistake. They don't make many. They wait for you to make yours. I thought, you know, the, the story is the Leafs getting the third goal and finally scoring. But in the end, I think, you know, the, the patience and commitment to defense for the full 60 makes the difference. Yeah. Well, Sammy, I understand what you're saying about, like, trying to enjoy the small wins. Cause I'm with you. Like I, I think that every Leaf fan watching this thing right now had a pretty visceral reaction to the Matthews goal. Very like, cathartic. Yeah. I, I, I have a tough time believing that anyone watching this currently was like, nice. Hmm. <laughs> you know? Well done. Good. Hey. Well done, good sir. <laughs> good job. You know, you know who the only guy that had like the tough reaction is the guy who spent the entire game like, mother bleeping him up and down and then <laughs> yeah. it was like they're gonna lose they're gonna lose was the buddy amongst the group that was like they're gonna lose it they're gonna lose it and then he's the guy that the other boys grab and they're like ah and he goes <laughs> happy to be wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> happy to be wrong guy is the only one that 
<laughs> that gave like a shrug on that play. Yeah. But to me, it's like that question about how much does this change your perception? I will say this born, like kind of to try to tie into that answer. And this will come back to haunt me. And this will be probably the, the worst thing. I just am not overly impressed by the talent level of the Boston Bruins. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like the Leafs can hang around in the series, even making some mistakes. It's like, just don't shoot yourselves in the foot, hang around, and you should be able to out-talent this hockey team. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. No, sorry. Go ahead, Bonnie. No, no, go ahead, Sam. Well, no, I, I, I think there's two things can be true, like you like to say, but like, you know, mm -hmm. they can still easily lose to this team, but they're not an overly, they're oh. not an overly impressive squad. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, they have some scary guys on there, but when you get down the lineup, it's not like a terrifying team and they take advantage on their special teams and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. your point's well made. And when it comes down to it, you have Austin Matthews in a spot like that. It's, it's nice to have Austin Matthews. So looking no, down at, never. and it's very nice. So I, I, yeah, I think I feel better. Clearly the least one, it's an easy thing to say. It changes the perception of the series, getting a split on the road or whatever, but yeah. The Leafs should be right in this series with the with the Bruins with their talent level. Like it's not, it's a very evenly matched thing here, yeah. and it feels like it's going to be going back and forth the rest of the way. You know what's good too is like I think you put the Bruins on their heels with some of their decisions a little bit with how tonight goes. Like they put Allmark in after Swayman is lights out. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Tavares one doesn't go in. Like they'll definitely go Swayman next game, but maybe they're second guessing their coaching decision there a little bit. Pete gets hurt. All of a sudden, they, their matchups kind of got a little wonky and they weren't able to go a hard match against Matthews and things start to slip a bit. Like, you look at the Leafs' depth, J.D., you and I were texting about 89. Like, I like Nick Robertson tonight and his seven minutes that he played. Yeah. But, like, you know, there's enough guys down the lineup for the Leafs that can give you some good minutes. And to your point about talent, the Bruins are, they're Pasternak, they're Marchand, they're McAvoy and Lindholm and their goaltending. And if those guys, you're able to contain them a little bit, you, you feel like the depth of the lineup for the Leafs is pretty darn good. Everywhere you put Callie Yarncroft feels like the, like a solid line. It's, it's By the bizarre. way, I totally understand why Sheldon Keefe likes him because he's one of the only guys that just like consistently wins board battles. Yeah. Like he just sticks his nose in there and all of a sudden the puck pops out and the Leafs have it and you go, I get why the coach likes you. Like I, I he works his bag oh. off every shift. He is a yeah. hardworking guy. Hardworking guy. Although I will say, hey, Sheldon Keefe, good idea putting the guy who scored all the power play points last year on the power play one <laughs> instead of Callie Yarncroft for three minutes in game yeah. one. That was like the world's easiest adjustment that genuinely uh, anybody on the couch could have made. They made it. But yes, good for him. And yeah, you know, I, like I agree with you guys. To me, the, the biggest thing tonight is just the psychological stuff. Like, Borny, you've put a seed of doubt in their heads. Yeah. They don't feel completely invincible about Toronto. Now, if you're the Leafs, you're the ones going, instead of the Nylander thing going, oh, if only we would have had Nylander, what would this series be? You're thinking, we beat the Bruins and we did it without Nylander. We On beat the, the Bruins. Without Nylander in regulation. Exactly. You know, we beat the Bruins down in the hockey game two separate times. I, I just feel like that. People doubt whether momentum is real in a series. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know how real it is game to game either. But I will say that for a Leafs team that has just struggled to just make the Bruins seem human at times, to just get this victory under these circumstances it has to be huge to me. Yeah. And I think, you know, you talk about getting off the schneid. Matthews here after yep. the 70 goal chase and not having it go in and having that whole, you know, dog and pony show for the end of the week of the season and then the first game he doesn't get one and people are talking about how many straight games it's been playoff games it's been since he scored to see mm -hmm. that one go in to get two assists to play as well as he did tonight going into your home game on wednesday night him coming home with the series split you just have to feel like that completely frees him up and you're going to get the absolute best version of matthews coming home so i think that like i mean it's clearly an important goal in the game it's the winning goal but just for him, for him to see it go yeah. in is massive. And massive. not like some cheeky little tip or off his no. skate or something. He, we beat him clean, you Put know, him a, yeah, a great finish. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. They got a good game out of Tavares tonight. I was really hard on him on our show today um, after game one, but drew a penalty scores a goal. You know, he's just kind of involved a little bit more in the play. Like, not like I thought he was dynamically wonderful or anything, but I just thought, you know, if he can give you that every night, you take it. Yeah, You know what I liked about him is, and I texted you guys the second the game started, he threw two hits in his, I want to say, first three shifts. Mm -hmm. Like his first shift, he has this one where he 
like yeah, just throws play. two towards Marshan. And then a couple minutes later in the period, he throws like a backwards check. Oh. Like, yeah, that's oh, that's not, yeah, but that's you, the Nye's getting hit. I don't know why that's in there. Well, but, that, was uh, getting hit by, that was Tavares getting hit by Pasternak, and then he comes back at him back. later in that shift. Oh, that's that's him? I thought that was yeah. Nye's. Okay, sorry. I, I messed that one up. I thought that was Tavares. Oh. But yeah, oh, that is. Yeah. That's a big hit. But that then he follows he it up, you know. He did no shrinking. Yeah. Violet goes back at him, which is good. Yeah. He was, but that's it. He just felt more engaged. And, and, you know, he scored the goal too. He had a, I thought he had a good reaction. Maybe it's because I'm so used to him looking like a robot mm. that seeing him actually scream like that makes me feel a little bit better. But yeah, I just, I, I thought Tavares played a fine game tonight. It was interesting though. Did you guys think that they started to put Marner with Matthews a little bit more? Like it started on the four on four, mm -hmm. but I guess, Borny, do you think they did that to try to get him going? Because they, they put him up with Matthews a few times. Yeah. Well, I just think last game, um, Tavar or Ma sorry, Marner ends up playing 20 minutes and six seconds. He's a guy who can handle 23 minutes and typically does for them. I feel like the PK kind of messed him up in game one. And I just think they're looking for mm -hmm. more opportunity to get him out there. And yeah, with Matthews, okay. I, you know, it, it, you talked about the talent differential in these teams. Some of that is vested in number 16 on the Toronto Maple Leafs, who is supposed to be one of their difference makers who through two games hasn't had, hasn't had it, you know? And so I think it's worthwhile the way that, you know, when Bertuzzi wasn't scoring, you put him on the power play, he starts to find mm -hmm. it. If you got to put 16 with 34 to get 16, finding it, you're going to need all these guys. You're not going to get through without them. Yeah. I think we can all agree that it still wasn't great from 16 tonight. I don't think Marner was particularly good again tonight. Thought that there's a lot of time. I get it. It's a great win for the Leafs, and I don't want to focus too much on the negatives, clearly. But still going forward, they're going to need more out of them, and they're going to beat them. And I said it last show. I'll say the same again. Like, I mean, I don't know how many times you guys get that play sent to you or or uh, tweeted at you or DM to you of him. Does like, Joe have that of, clip? Of him bailing out in the corner. I don't know. I should have told him. But I, I he get, bails out in the corner, doesn't take contact. The puck goes out the clear way. Yeah. Like, people are hyper-focused on Mitch Marner right now. Now that, like, and the pressure even more grows on him because Tavares gets off the schneid here. He scores a big one. Matthew scores the winner. Domi gets a big goal. Has the assist, the sick alley-oop pass to, to Matthews on the winner. And Marner, mm -hmm. I think he was dash one tonight, right? Like, he mm -hmm. zeros, dash one, played over 20 minutes. This pressure is going to start to grow on him, so they need him to kind of get off the schneid here. But, yeah, it's, you know, I don't want to focus too much yeah, on it. But no, no, it again. I, I will. I'll do it. Like, I'll say it. Like, I, I don't care about this. It feels like a pylon at times. And to be honest, this, this reeks of, um, you know, when someone is just getting killed on Twitter and you start to go, okay, like enough, right? Yeah, For the most yeah, part, unless it. it's someone you really hate, then you're kind of like, all right. <laughs> but, in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just that you DM it to someone like, look at this. <laughs> but, but in this instance, I'm really not trying to pile on, man. I, I got nothing against Mitch Barner. His success is my success. Like I yeah. want the Leafs to be a good, good hockey team that goes deep in the playoffs. And I will say in terms of, there were a lot of things that changed my perception tonight, right? Like we touched on the mental stuff. We touched on Matthews, finally see one go in. Um, we didn't talk about Samsonov yet, but we will, you know, like the Leafs humbled the Bruins. The one thing that just did not change whatsoever for me was Mitch Barner. When he wasn't with 34, I barely noticed them. And, you know, maybe this is a good time, Bourne, to ask you what you saw in this final play. I think that something could be made about Keefe not going to two centers with this much time left on the clock. Yeah. Um, but he does throw Marner out there, who is his defensive ace and the guy that we, you know, was, what, third in Selkie voting last season? So you can't yeah. be too upset about it. But, Joe, let's, let's run the goal at the end of the period because Samsonov takes a puck off his mask and <sighs> the Leafs have all the momentum in the world. They've come back. All of a sudden, there's a stoppage of play. And then this draw happens, 13 seconds left. Benoit jumps up. What exactly is Marner supposed to be doing here on this play? Because, yeah. again, he, it, I, I'm not sure if this is one where I'm supposed to, like, really criticize him. But to me, it's like it's a pretty awful look when you're the closest guy to the, yeah. the best player on the other team who scores a goal. Yeah, he's basically supposed to hold the middle of the ice there. You know, this is, I wrote an article with Andrew Brewer on D-Zone coverages before playoffs. You can go back and look at that explains some of this. But this is where the... Zone coverages gets mixed up when Benoit comes up high and Nyes is up high. So you've got all these guys up high. So Marner's job is just to protect the house a little bit and, you know, allow Benoit to go out and, you know, with his guy up top. So, yeah, it is his responsibility there. You know, he's not typically a guy who makes defensive errors, doesn't happen a ton, but definitely a spot where he needs to hold his ice a little bit more. So, 
definitely more to be got out of him. And so, you know, we talked at the top of the show, you win without Nylander, you win without getting the best out of, uh, out of Marner. And I also feel like you're winning, not getting the best out of Morgan Riley. Like there's reason to believe the Leafs are in a pretty good spot with guys just waiting to find it. Boy, watching that play, that is not an oil painting. Good Lord. A lot of, there's a lot of there's a lot of people you could put that one on. That is not pretty. But yeah, it's a tough visual to have Marner having a front row seat for both the goals that enter the Leafs net tonight, including the the penalty the penalty kill one where he doesn't deny the pass across. I know Lilligren shares some blame in that as well. Mm -hmm. But so as happy as I was when that Matthews goal goes in, I'm as equally as mad as when Pasternak scores with seven seconds left in the period. And I just it's something that you know, you talk about it all the time, but when you, in the regular season, you have these bad habits that happen and these things that happen throughout, they often rear their ugly head at the worst time in these big moments in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that happened to the Leafs all year. The stupid goal, the start and end of periods. And it's just, it's one, you, the one thing that can't happen that happens there and it's brutal. They give them credit for bouncing back, but it doesn't take away from how bad that was in the moment. It was brutal to let that happen. Yeah. And to, and that line, you know, I don't love the Keefe decision having that line out there, but if I'm not mistaken, last I checked in the regular season, I think Tavares was first maybe in the NHL in faceoff percentage. He was top five anyway. I didn't check in the last 10 games of the year, but like he's a good faceoff man. So well, sure, I think sure. that's why he's out there. Marner can defend. So yeah. Yeah. I, I They were out on the ice to finish the game too. Yeah. I was kind of curious about this where I'm like, is this not the time where you're loading up with Austin Matthews or at least having, again, why, if why not? Camp, though, who camp is the defensive ace and who is the guy who actually got the puck out to finish the game and got it down yeah. into the offensive zone. So they put yeah. camp out there with those two guys, which Boy, good, for camp for, good for camp for learning his lesson of just like, Hey, don't just stare at pucks when they're right there for you. Oh, to get the zone. Yeah. Like, God, what a brain dead moment that was. Like, yeah. hey, here's what I wouldn't want to do. Rely on Timothy Lilligren to be the guy that's about to come make a hard play in the T-Zone. <laughs> on your stick, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. if you can get to the hockey puck, get to the hockey puck. Yes. I, I've, oh. I got to tell you, I thought like there was like a glitch in my TV. Like it Dang. stopped for a split second. <laughs> it was, this is the matrix where I went, oh, okay, it's all script because that, actor just stopped moving like he's a <laughs> what do the kids say non-playable uh player NPC. NPC. yeah non-playable character like that's what uh he was doing on that one okay uh, so we didn't touch on it um is there anything more important from tonight though from you guys than the way that Ilya samsonov played borny no well matthews maybe but samson is really is good like him seeing one goes going in i get it but yeah. he's always this good. guy needed that yeah and and didn't just play solid, like made a couple saves where he didn't need to make them. Well, they didn't need to, but like he, he went above and beyond. So yeah, that that's a huge moment. Just just for his own confidence to feel like, hey, I said after game one, I wasn't going to let it get to me. And I bounced back in game two, held the boys in it on the road. Like that should be, if he's a guy who's fragile mentally, he can also be strong mentally when he's hot. So that one should go right to his head. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, Sammy. I mean. This, to me, reminded me so much of the way Samsonov looked last year in the playoffs against Tampa and some of those games where they needed him. And, I, yeah, you're obviously the Bruins have two really, really good goalies. Like, they're both excellent, and whoever plays, you're going to have to be really good. You're going to have to match them regardless of who's in net. And tonight, Samsonov was a better goalie. He made one more save. That obviously wasn't the case in the first game, clearly. But tonight, he's the better goalie. He makes one more – or makes another save – more than uh, than Allmark does, and they win. Like this is mm -hmm. what they need from him. They need a starting goal performance. And I think we had like we're we've been hard on Keith. We've been hard on the coaching staff for many things. I think it would have been a pretty easy move to go to Wall after Game One. Lots of people were saying that they should go to Wall. I think you know me. I think all of us were lockstep and saying that uh, that they should stick with Samsonov on least talk on Saturday night. But credit to them for sticking with him. They went back to their guy, the guy that they've been trying to build up, and he rewarded them with an excellent performance. Massive for the Leafs if they can get yep. this guy. They got a real shot if they can get this guy, no question. Yeah, listen, um, I understand why Leaf fans don't feel uh, super confident in Ilya Samsonov. <laughs> it doesn't... Yeah, uh, literally. It, it, like, it's it's pretty obvious. But this is the guy. With the guy. <laughs> Pardon me? It's been a bumpy road with the guy. Yeah, but that being said, he is the only goaltender in the last 20 years that's won a series with them. Yep. And 
I feel like that never gets mentioned when discussing this player. And yeah, okay. I, I actually don't think Keith. I think if Keith would have gone to Wool, I think that would have been like a truly insane, insane move. Yes. Um, like I, I don't, I don't think that that was on the table whatsoever. I do think that the leash was short, but I think a lot of the conversation is that this dude is a bit of a whipping boy and he makes fans nervous. But ultimately, he came up with some just monumental big time saves in this game. Like I counted five that I went holy crap on for Elias mm -hmm. Samsonov tonight. Thought he bounced back in a huge way. Um, think it's huge for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And yeah, I think that it's nice to have one question answered and not having to throw your rookie goaltender into the fire again down 0-2 in a series where you're saying, yeah. hey, please save us. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. How about the uh, the save Allmark makes on the other end on Robertson? Oh, oh. Is that robbery? <laughs> he hit it hard, too. That was not like a he, shot. That was a clean hit it hard, and he made a save on it. So that was that was a big one, man. But, yeah. you know, sorry to pop around, but in terms of, like, questions being asked and answered, um, you know, the power play got two goals, right? Like, they get one waved off, and then they score. Does that make you guys feel any better about the power play part of things? I, well, I actually count them as two. Yeah. <laughs> but they, well, I mean, sure. But, I mean, they did score twice. Yeah. To me, the special teams tonight was actually, like, a bit, you know, and I know the, the power play goal in the first period or whatever, and I, I understand that. But the Leafs got a clutch kill at the end of that game yeah. where where Bertuzzi takes a absolutely brain-dead penalty. I know Marchand dives, but the refs are already looking at it. It's a full scrum, and he comes in there and hacks him on the leg. It's like you just – you can't have that. Yeah. Labushkin, dumb too. Should have been a five-on-three, honestly. I can't believe they pulled both guys again there. I was surprised. But, you know, having said all that, it was a massive moment in the game for the penalty kill him out there. And what Leaf fan on planet Earth didn't think the Bruins were scoring on that power play. Every yeah, single, you thought, like, of course. I was like, oh, yeah. they're scoring. I was talking to my wife, like, there's this is a guaranteed goal. This is happening. They're scoring, guaranteed. And it was a clutch kill, and you get a huge tying goal from your power play. So you know, it's little. It's a it's a little bit of progress for your special teams. It, you you can build off that clutch kill in the third period. To me, it was a positive from this night. And, uh, I'm happy, happy, obviously that they got it at the end of the game there. But yeah little bit of a building block for me. I, I want to go back to you on the power play in a second here, Borny. Um, but I, I do want to say about this play, I don't really mind the Bertuzzi one as much just because I think it was going to be a power play either way. Like the refs just decided, I think, to give Coyle the extra minute or the extra, the extra penalty based on that, where they were like, we're not giving them a five on three to close this hockey game. Obviously, this is a scrum. I think Labushkin reacted that way because he was so pissed off that he had a horrible turnover and he went, oh my God, I'm an idiot. I'm just going to find somebody and hammer right. in the face. 100% and right. That was just pure rage. Like that yeah. is clearly, clearly. the. And I don't love Sheldon Keefe calling out Domi after game one, like just by like name checking the guy that actually played hard for you and mm -hmm. who again was awesome for you tonight. But that's on his mind. Probably when we're sitting here doing all these things, we're like, hey, Sheldon, what do you care most about? I say, please, guys, stay out of the penalty box and stop doing the McCabe slash Labushkin ones that are going to put me into an early grave. Um, <laughs> anyway, Borny, uh, what did you see on the power play? Because, yeah, I don't know. Uh, did you feel like it was much different to you then? Because you have it as two goals, so. <laughs> well, you know, they, they got a couple into the net. Um, yeah, yeah you know, not a ton different, but like, I think of the things that were positives for them and it does come from some Bertuzzi play in front of the net, right? Like Bertuzzi, there's one where Austin shoots it a little bit early, but at least Bertuzzi is a screen and he's shooting for his stick and he kind of creates that double chaos. And Tavares does like to pop up into the bunk, uh, bumper at times. So I, I don't mind having both of them out there. I, I think it creates a little bit of confusion in net front, whatever, which I'm guessing because of those two guys that the least power play was told the focus is not is to get pucks to the net. Not not necessarily shooting to score. We just want to get pucks there, and then we trust we got these two awesome guys around the net. And we'll figure it out. Which is why you got Mitch, you know, his slap shot from outside on the wall and a Oof. distant shot. Like you know, there's some shots I didn't like, but I think that the idea was probably we want to get the puck into there and see try to outnumber them down low. Even though it didn't work, I think that was probably the theory. Yeah, I, even on non-power play situations tonight, it felt like there was a very concerted effort from the Leafs to have people in front when they were shooting. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, last last game on Saturday, the amount of just wide-open, clean looks that Swayman had, he saw the puck really well, 
felt like tonight they were really kind of crossing in front of Allmark, going to the net hard, taking pucks down That's there. Well, so they it, the day last year, Sam, right? Yes, hundred percent. A ton of them, a lot of screen yeah. traffic and tips. Yeah, absolutely. So, one thing I had noted before this game is that Boston scored three goals in the previous game, in game one off the cycle. And if you go and you look at the goals, right, and we were going, I don't love that from Samsonov, but you know why you can't kill him on him? Is because screens is that yeah. there's guys in front and they get to those areas. Or it's like uh, DeBrusque on the doorstep, banging one in where he beats guys to position. How does Domi get his goal tonight, right? Where does yeah. Tavares get his? It's where did right, Bertuzzi absolutely. get the one that he gets it pulled back from? Like, yes, you can hope and pray for those alley-oops that uh, Max Domi throws up to Austin Matthews and it's brilliant and it's eye-catching and it's the thing where you go, that's the game-breaking playmakers that you have. But ultimately, like... That was another huge, huge part of this hockey game is Toronto was far more committed to playing in the dirty areas. And yeah. like, even again, the goal that they score on the power plays because that's where Tavares was. Like, I know we touched on that, but I, I God, that just, it has to be the formula for these guys. Is that home plate area where the Boston Bruins are going to put the lumber on you? I guess not even anymore because playoff hockey now, everything's a penalty. So it's like... <laughs> You, that's you're safe there it's like being a wide receiver going over the middle now it's like it used to be dangerous but now it's not so bad but god they just need to they need to exist there more often that was a great play by domi to find that puck there because that thing's yeah. rattling around it's in a feet it's in sticks or whatever and he makes a great play to kind of knock it down to his hands and smash it home and you're right that just felt massive so that they weren't trailing one nothing for the rest of that it just felt mm. huge in that moment they got a lot of guys who like to play there, whether it is Tavares or Bertuzzi. Domi gets the goal, yeah. you know, down the line of Yarncrock will play there. Nice will play there. They got guys that will play in that area of the rink. Um, is there any other major topic you guys want to touch on from this game? Uh, <laughs> Brody's got to get a next game if you want to yeah. start looking ahead. That's okay. what I was going to go with. So who does he come in for then? That's a great question. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's, your, <laughs> who's your vote? Bunk, start. If if I had a vote, I would yeah. leave him out. I'm going stay the course, stay the same lineup. I would just say this, like if you're going to play Brody on his offside, like if you're going to try to play him on the right side, we just know it doesn't work anymore. Like he can't handle the four check. This team has enough guys. And this is just another thing tonight where what does the D do every single time? It is always just like chip it out, jam it out. They are the yeah. ultimate Sammy. You remember when they put Connor Brown and Zach Hyman, early Zach Hyman with Matthews and what we call it, like the choppers, into a square, the choppers, the choppers. That's, that's, <laughs> the choppers are back, but they're just in the form of the blue line. Like, is there, uh, was there one no. tape to tape pass from the blue line up to the well, floor? Actually one of my notes. So it's probably Lilligren for me. I, I'd have, you know, he, he's going to be a PK guy, Brody, mm -hmm. right? He can take that spot. Lilligren hands his problems off. Like he'll go back in a retrieval and he'll be like, now it's your problem. Like instead of putting it in a better spot for someone else, someone else yeah. has to go nose to the dasher and figure out how to get it off the wall with pressure. Like he just passes the buck problem wise for me. I thought, yeah. you know, McCabe has been flawed at times, but at least oh, he's yeah. good on retrievals. But he's Broke. firing grenades too, Borny. You can't, you're, not taking, you're not taking him out clearly, but McCabe's no. been firing grenades too. Like no, there are yeah. a bunch of grenade launchers back there. It's they just are. nothing's I mean. clean. They're, they're, the, they're, they're the coming choppers. out fly and hard and high. It's really, yeah. it's not pretty coming out of the defensive zone. Yeah. But also there's also the element for me that if you're serious about going deeper, Brody, you can't not play him for like two weeks or something, you know? Like I just, I want to get him back in and no one has been so good. I can't take them out. So I would do that. To I me, just, it's Michigan. If you're taking somebody out, that's a fair, totally fair vote. And him and Morgan had a couple games towards the end of the year where they are all right together. And Labushkin's been struggling, I boys. I know he's physical. I know he's big, but he has a turnover tonight. The couple turnovers tonight, dumb penalty at the end of the game. Slow. Labushkin, though. I know. I like him too, but it's just if you're looking at, I'm not. I I think you don't want to change a winning lineup, and if you're not going to change it after you yeah. lose and you go and you win, you're probably not going to change it again. But next change for me is probably Labushkin coming out. Listen, um, there's there's a couple things here. One, I think Keefe has already shown us that he's not going to make a change after a win, considering he didn't put Michael Bunting, who was a 20-plus goal scorer, yeah. back into his lineup after a win last year. Yeah. But two, Ilya Labushkin was plus two tonight. He is not coming out. But three, um, it's quite telling about what this blue line is that here we are going, take anybody out. Like, <laughs> anyone. Anyone. <laughs> Who's your, you know, yeah. Who do you like? Who's been a good D for them? Like there's None. moments. 
No. I guess no one's been perfect, but they it's yeah, oh. that's for sure. No, but, but I mean, just... they, they're good players. Like if Morgan and McCabe start to play well, like mm. what I feel, I feel like the Leafs have so much more to give here and yeah. it's one, one going home quick. Yeah. Tell me your favorite Morgan Riley moment from the first two games. Has he made your notes once for a positive play? Cause mine are completely bereft of his, of, of his name, Borny. Like I have yeah, no, I, I, I said, he's, he's looked a step and a half slow. I actually, well, one of my notes says he doesn't look injured. He looks depressed. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks like, oh. All right. I just, I'm sorry. I think that the blue line as a whole is a mismatch of your hopes and praise. And you're just, again, it gets back to the thing we were saying earlier is, hey guys, just don't shoot them in the foot, in the foot. Like don't, don't just cough one up to the front of the net. Hey, don't take a stupid penalty. So I guess like Brody would lead a category for me and I have more faith he won't make a stupid penalty. But, and I guess like he can break a pass out better than some of the other guys that we yeah. mentioned. Like, I'm not going to pretend like he can't not break one out. Better. Not a yeah. lot better. He can PK. Yeah. But I just, like, again, you're, you're telling me anybody like all these names you're throwing at me come in come out Brody in I, at the end of the day here's what I would say if I was part of the deciding committee and I had to pick my battles this would not be a hill I'm dying on like I would yeah, be yeah. saving my battle for something else I'd be going sure do it <laughs> like I don't no. care they're extremely all the same fair. guy to me essentially extremely yeah. fair here's the other one though if like the Nylander thing is the weirdest thing on planet earth. Like I, I feel like they got to say uh, somebody like I've, I'm sure you guys have heard from people too. Like people reaching out and giving you their theories. It's like I've heard back. I've heard migraines. Those are now my winning theories. Um, Yeah. Uh, if he can come back for the next game, born, you loved 89 tonight. So are you losing those crucial seven minutes? Like, or, or hey, he, he's be as sarcastic as you want about 89 yeah. tonight. He shook guys in the <laughs> ozone. He almost buried one. This guy is the only guy who you can put in the press box, like a yeah. put him in the attic and forget about him for six weeks, pull him out. And he's fresh as a daisy. He's full of <laughs> preservatives. He never goes yeah. stale. He's, I, I, you know, I have come around on this guy. Yeah. He's going right. to score him a big goal this series. You wait. Hey, listen, uh, that shot, like Sam said, he hammered that. That's one of the hardest shots I've seen, like, get saved into a glove that was like a wide open net. But right here's on. my thing. Out of all the groups that I like the most, the fourth line is two behind the top line. Like, if I'm saying who I like consistently the most in yeah. terms of what they're supposed to do, how many times did the fourth line cave in their fourth line tonight? Like, Glad they you it out. Dominated them. They spent the well, whole I'm not game touching that. It was a great game. Dewar on the four check. You got in. He got the breakout stopped and helped turn and turn the puck over. I thought. I thought through two games that Camp has been excellent for the Leafs. Yeah. I, you know, it's this is another guy that's like a playoff type player. Big plays well defensively and leans on guys in the playoffs. And I think that full line, like they just really are complimenting each other. And you got to give credit to Reeves. He was out there. He, he missed the last shift of the fourth line. They put Yarncroft out there for the last fourth line shift, which is fine. But I think he had two or three shifts in the third period, Reeves. Like, he's been totally playable and totally fine. Totally he fine. Pa he pancaked two guys behind the nets. I don't even know who it was that he hit. And they just they led to a, a – he's hammering, guys. Yeah. He's just – he's playing the best he possibly can. He's contributing. And you're right. Like, I really have loved that line. I love them again tonight. So, you can't break that up. You're right. Absolutely yeah, right. So to answer your question with Willie in, I, I don't know who you take out. Nyes is getting absolutely rocked, but he's oh also God. fast and on the four check, and he's I like him too. So I he got nice took two of the hardest. Who hits. got him? Who got him? God, that was a big hit. Oof. Yeah. Oh, is it McAvoy? Oh, yeah. There's oh, this one. Yeah. That's McAvoy. That one. No, but then he got another one too. Back, the, uh, the offensive zone, Carlo got him good. Yeah. He poor sweet baby Nyes. Yeah, this one. Oof. Like yeah. that angle, that's toughy. Yeah. yeah, he was, you're right. He was eating it tonight, but he was getting up and he was coming right back, you know? Uh, he's just the puppy, <laughs> right? Where it's, he's getting bullied. He's got the big paws and you go, oh yeah, he's gonna be bigger someday. He'll be fine someday. <laughs> but yeah, as of right now, yeah, the awareness is not fully there. He hasn't like grown into his body yet. It's, yeah. just, it's probably Robertson who comes out. It's it not probably. Definitely. It's yeah. definitely Robertson. Like one hundred percent. We're <laughs> buddy. Put him in the attic. He's fine. He yeah, doesn't he respond fine. He but won't he's go going there. in the attic. Like yes, 
He's and, attic bound. <laughs> and then you can do is Mark Griswold put that present in his attic and pull him out for game seven and he'll get you the winner. Yeah. And then you can yep. do then you can do the big trick. You can scratch him and then he'll come back yes. in whatever game and he'll score. So you can yeah. do his magic trick. Yeah, Perfect. Borny, we, we've been calling him scratch and score because that's what he does. He gets scratched, he comes back in the back. <laughs> if you're him, how much do you hate that reputation? Like you're the bigger man, you don't complain, you do your job, and now you've just enabled but he the He does complain. You. Like there's been multiple stories through the media of this guy being like, if you cut, you know what he is? He's literally squeak from basketball, where he's like, if you rip <laughs> on me three or four more times, I swear to God, that's him every single time they scratch him. He's like, if you if you scratch me three or four more times, I swear I'm gonna demand a trade yeah, out of here. And then he just never does. That's rather so, rude, but funny. I'm just it was it's funny. I don't care. Whatever. It's yeah. it works. It works. Yeah. Uh okay, what else? Uh anything else from this game for you guys? Uh no, I'm new good. Vibes, I think I'm good. New vibes. Mm -hmm. New yeah, vibes I just, indeed. I think the it is amazing. And we've touched it on this start, and I guess we can finish on it here. How much different you feel after that like it's just that's a great reminder for playoff hockey especially in game ones where you're like oh my god the amount of stuff i read today and got from my buddies today and even you know as early as the end of that second period was hearing mm -hmm. like playoff hockey is a hell of a drug boys and it's not it's not for the faint of heart and tonight was another example of that and game one doesn't make a series we got a hell of a series coming up here, boys. Feels like she's going to go the distance. 100%. Well, also, though, it's like you wait all year for this thing to happen. And, like, I know that's how we started that last show. But literally every issue that we were worried about <laughs> when it came to regular season showed up in the first game of the playoffs. So, like, I, I'm i certainly not going to be trying to dunk on anyone that was, like, concerned about the Leafs losing in the oh, most talking, important time buddy. of the year. Look who you're talking to. I was yeah. sending the texts, dude. Yeah. It was yeah. me. <laughs> People jump ship after game one. Like I thought, I thought to someone today, he was like, I'm not watching tonight. Game one. Yeah, that's, the, the, I feel like that is the weirdest lie people have. It's like quitting Twitter. When yeah. people are like, I quit Twitter. And then people are like, okay. And then they're like, no, you're not going to give me a bigger reaction for this. Okay. I guess I'll go back to Twitter. You're like, yeah, nobody cares about you. <laughs> like, nobody <laughs> Nobody no, cares no, no about, cares your... about you. No one cares about anything but themselves. No, that's, that's exactly right. And uh, but you should care about this show. And so you should leave five stars if you're listening on iTunes or on our. I would keep calling it iTunes. I guess it's not called that anymore. Apple Podcasts. Sorry. Yeah, like, yeah I know. Me too. Oh man, that's I call, a, I'll call it nice iTunes too. till the day I die. They still got on my phone the iTunes logo. So to me, it's iTunes. Anyway, Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on that, please take one second, leave us a review, five stars. Same thing if you're watching this on YouTube. It takes two seconds. Just hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment. really helps us out. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at JD Bunkus, at JD Bo uh, JT Bourne, and at Sammy McKee. Reach out anytime. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We will see you Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday, night. Wednesday night right after the game.